Hello and welcome to this special episode of Emirates 24-7. Coming to you direct from the Arab Media Forum here at the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Dubai. Now at its second day, the forum is looking at the evolving media landscape across the Middle East. The Middle East is now at a point where web use competes with traditional TV viewing. With users across Egypt, the UAE and Saudi Arabia online for over two hours each day. Now with so much time spent online, it's little surprise that digital ad spend now makes up 10% across the region, compared to just 1% three years ago. Now television still has the majority share at around 40%, but digital upstarts can no longer be ignored. Well, joining us today on the show are media experts to help us answer one question. How is TV adapting to the new media landscape? Well, joining us now is Nick Grand, the managing director of TV consultancy firm Channel Sculptor, and Dima Khatib from Al Jazeera Television. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, looking at this, this very sort of contemporary, very interesting issue uh, of, of new media and its relationship with television, um, would you say that we're at this point right now where television in the region is lagging behind a little bit when it comes to this kind of integration, especially when you compare it to, to Western markets? Uh, is television dying a slow death? Or wh what are your thoughts? Uh, Nick, uh, let's start with you. Well, first, great to be back. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, inevitably, yes, things are taking a little bit of time here compared with uh, more mature markets. Um, and there, I think there are a number of factors that relate to that. Technology plays a part, but there are also cultural reasons for it. But um, what's interesting is certain new media, I'm thinking here particularly about social media, are stronger here in many respects than anywhere else in the world. So you see that that combined with uh, the level of connectivity, particularly in the Gulf states, you could actually see an advancement in the, uh, the Middle East even exceeding what we see in, in uh, Europe and the States um, at some point. And, and Dima, obviously you're someone who's very active on social media. I mean, tell us a little bit about obviously, your own relationship to that. Well, if you go back before the Arab revolutions, things were completely different. I think Arab revolutions have completely changed the face of Twitter, Facebook, not just in the Arab world, but in the world media. Because Twitter and Facebook became, along with YouTube, became real sources. And the only source of information from countries where revolutions are taking place with total absence of free media or even any media to give us any information about the demos happening, the killings, um, and People became anybody, um, you know, could become a journalist, basically a citizen journalist, just having a, a cell phone and an internet connection. And you can see, when I started tweeting the Tunisian revolution, none of the Arab media, even the foreign media, uh, were present on Twitter. Nobody had an account. It was just a bunch of us, uh, some journalists, some activists. And now all of them are all over the place. Um, and it was... I think it was about maybe uh, right after the Libyan, the start of the Libyan revolution, that they really realized they needed to be on Twitter and Facebook and that they could not uh, function really without being part of this new media wave. Do you think we would have seen this change, this new media ra uh, wave, if it hadn't have been for the er uh, Arab evolution? Or do you think it was more of a catalyst for change? I do think we would have. Uh, seen it coming anyway. I mean, it, it was going to happen, um, but the Arab revolutions really accelerated it, especially in the Arab world. And I mean, I remember that most of the conversations on Twitter were about, I don't know, fashion, what you had today, this morning, coffee, or, <laughs> you know, your girlfriend dumped you or something like that. And it, it I mean, Arab revolutions really changed them even for a Latin American audience that, you know, I mean, I, I have... I, I am in touch with Latin American audience, and um, I saw how the chain uh, was formed because Arab revolutions also affected people in Europe, and then there was the, um, the the Occupy movement in the U.S., and then Twitter turned into this like international community of revolutionaries communicating and exchanging experiences, and then the, the traditional media um, was a bit late, but eventually caught up and realized it had to do something, um, you know, to keep up with uh, what's happening online. Uh, absolutely. Now, bringing, I guess, more generally to our, our regional uh, broadcasters here and the uh, evolving role of, of social media, obviously, it has had a very, very strong role, both in, in news broadcasting and, of course, in, in, in uh, powering that revolutionary change. Uh, Nick, just, just getting your perspective on entertainment, entertainment aspect, you know, how our local broadcasters can use social media more effectively. I mean, they are using it. We are seeing, you know, a lot of uh, shows, uh, ours included, uh, on, on the social uh, networking. But 
is there really the kind of integration? Are they really taking full advantage of it? What do you think? Well, I think just to Dina's point, there's a lot to talk about in this region, and it's very, very newsworthy. So it's hardly surprising that news is a dominant factor in the social media here, and, and particularly because it's the easiest way to disseminate news for, for, for many people from a cost perspective as, as well as, as a freedom of speech perspective. But um, I think um, in other areas, in entertainment in particular, there will be some advantages gained, I'm, I'm sure, from the fact that uh, there is this integration that's happening um, on the news side of things. Um, of course, television here doesn't make the same kind of money that it makes in, in uh, Europe or in the States uh, in, or in other markets. And so news plays an important factor because it, uh, television has a number of other uh, objectives, I suppose you'd say, like uh, um, for, to own a television station here is not purely a commercial thing. But interestingly, like I, I was having a conversation at the media forum yesterday with uh, a lady who uh, runs a, a television station which is using um, social media to, uh, to, to get connected with Syrian um, audience. And um, it highlighted for me how there is a crossover. I mean, if you can afford to pay for satellite space, then effectively you can have a social media platform of sorts on air. Mm -hmm. So we'll certainly see that role evolve in the months to come, I think. <laughs> Indeed. Um, just, just quickly before we go, um, to break, uh, Dima, asking you personally, I guess, in terms of the kind of, you know, you, you've been very successful uh, with, with the Twitter platform, with getting a uh, response from people. What kind of content have you seen uh, that people are most interested in? What are they hungry for? What kind of engagement have you seen? You mean, what, what is the content that I've been getting? You, you, you personally, yeah. obviously, as a prominent tweeter. Yeah, um, th I think the fact that I started, I mean, I, I joined Twitter in October 2010, just before the Arab revolutions, and um, I believe that WikiLeaks was my first um, exciting night on Twitter. Um, and that night I realized that I had this capacity as a journalist to transform raw material into newsy material for very ordinary Twitter users in a way that other Twitter users couldn't do. Um, and when the Arab revolutions started, I, um, what gave my content um, you know, uh, some value is that I could give background to non-Arab speakers because I tweet in four languages, sometimes in five. Wow. Um, so I gave the Latin American audience in Spanish, French, English, and Arabic, and sometimes Portuguese. I gave them the background they needed to have of why these Arab revolutions were happening. Absolutely, and very, I gave very important. The Arab, work, the Arab readers, background of the, my um, my experience in revolutionary Latin America. So actually, it was a bit of a sort of cross-cultural exchange, and I think uh, a lot of journalists, editors in chief started following me because they felt they could get you know, more than just the, the event and the information. And on top of that, um, I found myself connected with all of the activists in Tunisia and then in Egypt and then in Libya and everywhere who just would every day provide me with the latest videos and the latest information on what was happening in those revolutions. So, I, I mean, it was my own newsroom. Absolutely, indeed, indeed. And, and um, giving back the information. All right, well, it's of course, thank you for getting the, the message out there in so many languages. Dima, thank you very much for joining in on discussion uh, on today's show. And Nick, uh, please stay with us. Uh, it's time now for a break, but we'll be back in just a moment with more from the Arab Media Forum. Stay with me.